Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kristen and I'm switching things up for my currently inked pens this month. For the past few months, I selected a variety of pens and inks. For example, a couple Diamine 2022 ink vent colors, one, two, or three recent ink flight samples, my own bottled ink collection, pen pal samples. But this month, I want to focus on some very special fountain pens. If you watched my three-part debrief of the 2023 San Francisco Pen Show, then you will probably notice that nine out of these 12 pens are completely new to me. Instead of spreading out the testing process of these new pens over several months, I just wanted to jump right in and explore them all this month. So it may be a little bit ambitious and a little foolish, especially since I'm including some unfamiliar inks this month, but I know that I'll learn some good lessons and that's never a bad thing. So without further ado, let's take a look at these pen and ink pairings. This is the Monte Grappa Elmo with an extra fine nib and it's inked up with Inkabara 610 Dear Brown. This pen and ink pairing is a carryover from the August 2023 ink flight box. I've been loving both the pen and the ink, so I decided to keep it in rotation this month. This is one of the ink pairings that I just cannot escape and I don't even wanna try. I have adored Colorverse Iris Nebula since I first received it in my June 2023 ink flight box. This Twisby Eco is a medium nib and it has been inked up with this shimmery Iris Nebula since June. And I've been loving it just as much as I did three months ago. I am delighted to say that the pairing is still performing beautifully, even with on again, off again usage. Dominant Industry Matin is the reason why Colorverse Iris Nebula has a chance to shine again this month. A couple months ago, I purchased a sample of Matin from Van S. Pins, and I was shocked to see the similarities between this ink and Iris Nebula. So this month, I put Matin in a second Twisby Eco with a medium nib so that I could decide which was my favorite of the two inks. I felt that it was necessary to continue my exploration of two Diamine infant colors per month. Diamine Spiced Apple is a bold red ink with gold sheen and gold shimmer that looks like the perfect complement for my relatively new Estabrook Esty oversized pen. I'm hopeful that this ink will perform beautifully with a journal or nib. As an added bonus, I discovered that the shimmer agitates quite easily in this pen's converter. Because of that, I'm going to trust that my gentle rocking movements before each writing session are enough to reincorporate the shimmer into the ink. Diamine Flame is the second ink vent selection for this month. This ink is so orange. Of course, after I resolved last month to stop pursuing the perfect orange and yellow inks, this is one of the very next ink vent colors waiting on me. The Esterbrook Model J with the Techo nib drew the short stick. I honestly was not interested in putting this color in any of my other new pens, so here we are. This is the fountain telling pen that I purchased from Kristen Brooks at the San Francisco Pen Show. I believe this is the Charleston model fashioned from the three olive martini blank. Please don't quote me on that. The pen has an extra fine nib. Jonathan Brooks inked it on site with Sailor Manuel Fuji, so I do not yet have a swatch card to show you. But I went ahead and purchased a sample of this ink from Goulet Pens because I'd like to test this ink in a larger nib someday. So I'll have a swatch to show you sometime in the near future. Oof, this Pelican M800 is mesmerizing. It may look like a simple brown, but the quality is outstanding. I was so smitten with this thing at the San Francisco Pen Show that I purchased the pen without even thinking about the nib size until about 30 minutes later. And even then, I didn't care. I was either going to make that German broad nib work for me or figure out how I could work with it. Fortunately, I was able to get the nib customized by Mr. Mike Masayama. He ground this gorgeous broad nib into a cursive italic. I felt it was only natural to ink up this brown black pen with Pelican 4001 Brilliant Brown. I'm unfamiliar with both pen and ink, but I would hope that a Pelican ink will work perfectly in a Pelican pen. I inked up this Franklin Kristoff Model 2 at the San Francisco Pen Show with Manuscript Praline Frosting. 
It's a shimmery brown ink that I donated immediately afterwards. Do I regret that donation now that I tested it out in my broad sig nib? Yes. Yes, I do. Will I survive? Yes. Yes, I will. This Shown Design full-size fountain pen has an understated beauty. I intentionally selected the simplest looking pen that Ian Schoen had available at the pen show because I wanted it to be the subtle backdrop for such an amazing nib. This is the Shown Design Monarch nib with a perspective grind by Gina Salarino. It's beautiful. I have this pen inked up with Andorillium Told Moth Warm, an ink that I purchased at the pen show. This taupe color is just as smooth and subtle as the pen itself. Scribo was the first brand to catch my eye when I first arrived at the San Francisco Pen Show this year. After comparing the Scribo Puma and the Scribo Feel, I decided that I enjoyed holding and using the Feel more than the Puma, so that's what I bought. This Scribo Feel has a fine flex nib and it's inked up with Andorillium Purple Galanole Purple, another ink that I purchased at the Pen Show. This is a brute force design fountain pen made from spalted maple. I enjoy examining this pen up close because there are so many colors and textures to discover. This pen is inked up with Pelican 4001 Dark Green. Based on all the failed downstrokes in my writing samples, this fine nib is likely suffering from some baby's bottom. I'm actually looking forward to correcting that issue. This Platinum 3776 Nagasawa silhouette stopped me in my tracks as I was fleeing the San Francisco Pin Show Ballroom on day one. I readily purchased it with a medium nib before continuing my escape. I love the contrast of cool and warm colors on this pin. It's inked up with Sailor Shikiori Minori, the ink that was included with the Shikiori 5th anniversary fountain pen. This Omas Ojiva was both planned and unexpected. I had been searching the internet for an Omas fountain pen in soft green that was produced years, maybe even decades, before the Omas brand was revived last year. It figuratively fell into my lap as I signed up for Kirk Spears' nib grinding waitlist. This beautiful pen has a medium nib and it's inked up with one of my favorite green brown inks, Sailor Manyo Shirakashi. Th this pen writes so well that I can't even explain the sensation, the pen, the nib, the materials, the shape. I was feeling so much in this moment that I couldn't even remember the name of one of my favorite inks as I attempted to write. I don't know how I'm gonna focus long enough to journal with this pen, but needless to say, I am so glad that I have this pen in my collection. Oh my gosh, what ink is this? <laughs> What is, it, what is it again? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? Manyo, okay. <sighs> oh my gosh, okay. This, this is no Omas. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Okay, don't even know how to describe it. It's, it's excellent. This is Tamoy River paper. I really like how the ink performs, how all of these inks perform on Tamoy River paper. These are so very close to each other. It seems that Dominant Industry Matin looks a little bit more colorful, but slightly more pale in the ink swatches. It's a bit more saturated, but still lighter. Colorverse Iris Nebula is a deeper color, but it is less saturated, so it looks more gray. And I loved that whenever I wrote with Dominant Industry Matin, I could actually see as the ink was drying the shimmer particles that were swirling around in the wet ink on the paper. So that was actually a pretty cool experience. Sailor Manyo Fuji, whenever I write with this ink on a page by itself, it just looks gray. But in the midst of these colors, it actually looks like a bluish purple ink. Very interesting. I am loving Andorillium Purple Gallinule Purple because it goes down like a very cool tone, almost violet, a blue violet color, but then it dries down as a less saturated, slightly more of a berry color. 
Thymine Flame. I was not expecting to like it as much as I do. I think that this Techo nib and the texture on the, the well, the, yeah, the texture or the feedback on the nib is actually really working in favor of this combination. Thymine Spiced Apple. I didn't realize that this ink actually has a golden sheen. So to see an ink that has gold sheen and gold shimmer, that's just... Oh, that's beautiful. I'm excited to see what this looks like in long form writing. Pelican Brilliant Brown is more red than I anticipated, but I'm not mad at it. I really do like it. And I love writing with this Pelican, this M800 with a, a broad cursive italic nib. It just, it glides so effortlessly across the paper. I just, I love that experience. Manuscript Praline Frosting. I am kind of regretting for the first time now that I gave away this ink because it just looks and feels so good coming out of this nib. I am going to use as much of this ink as I can. I'm probably not going to unink this pen until I've used every last drop of it. So this one is probably going to stay inked until, you know, I write it dry because it just feels and it looks so nice. I love this combination already. And a really Tulip Moth Warm. This ink goes down a little bit more saturated, a little bit warmer, and then it dries down to a cooler, a cooler brown color. Sailor Shikiori Minori looks beautiful. And I have realized that I like platinum medium nibs. <laughs> this gold medium nib. I enjoy this pen much more than I am enjoying the soft fine nib. If you give me Diamine Poinsettia and that pen with that soft fine nib, I love it. But with this one, it just feels good. It feels sure of itself. I said this in other videos where I've encountered pen and ink combinations and pens that they just feel like they are sure of themselves. They just get the job done. This gets the job done and it feels good while it's getting the job done. I love that. I love that nib. <laughs> the first time I wrote with this pen, this is a, this is the first day that I have ever written with this pen, with ink in this pen. It felt so good that I kept forgetting the name of the ink. The feel of this nib, the feel of this pen in my hand, and the look, the just the aesthetics of this pen. It's just so nice. I am so very happy that I have this pen in my collection now. It's just, I am so very surprised at how well this pen performs. I'm glad that I found it. Inkabara 610 Dear Brown in the Monte Grappa Elmo Marshmallow is great as always, just like it was when I first inked it up. I'm just, I'm so very happy with that one. And this is the Brute Force Design Spalted Maple Fountain Pen. I believe that this nib has baby's bottom. Every time I was attempting to do a downstroke, it was like a 50-50% chance of a hard start. I'm gonna have to work on that because right now I'm actually using enough force to make it look like it is not a fine nib, but it is a fine nib. Okay, so this is Midori paper. I've come to realize that my inks are usually more saturated on the Midori paper, and I really love that about Midori paper, but I prefer the writing experience of Tamoy River paper over the experience of Midori paper. But I just love seeing how my inks and my pen and ink pairings look on Midori paper. Okay, this is Idoful paper most notably on Midori and Idoful paper. Dominant Industry Matin is gonna have me looking closely to see how consistently the shimmer is actually gonna show up in this ink because this already feels like a slightly drier ink than Colorverse Iris Nebula. So I would like to see how Dominant Industry Matin performs during my journaling sessions. I enjoy the writing experience, it's no surprise. I enjoy the writing experience of all of these pens on beautiful paper. I really love the drag of the nib across the paper for all of these pens on beautiful paper. You might be able to notice that I have a much more scripted connected lettering on most of these other papers. But when I got to Idoful, it was like a little bit more bubbly. It was just, I was giving myself a little bit more time and space to write certain letters and certain combinations. And so by the time I got down to, I think Diamond Flame, I started slowing down a little bit more with these because I really enjoyed how these nibs felt on the paper. And I kind of wanted to extend the amount of time that I spent using them on this paper. So yeah, I slowed down and really enjoyed the process with these pens. So this fine flex nib, I was really struggling here. And I think it was just because this was the very first time that I had ever written with this pen. I guess the feed needed to really adjust to what was going on. But after that, it was smooth sailing on each of these papers. I get narrower line widths on the Tamoy River paper and 
rhodia paper. It's much more noticeable on rhodia paper. I tend to experience this consistently that line widths are a little bit wider on Idoful paper. I was so very pleased <laughs> with the writing experience in here that I would love to have a journal like this to be able to write with larger nibs like this broad cursive italic nib, pelican broad cursive italic nib. Maybe even try this 1.1 stub nib again in a notebook like this because this was so fun. And writing with this was fun as well. So by the time I got to this Pelican M800, my handwriting was quite large. So I started off a little bit small, but here I, I had to write larger because it's such a broad nib. This is Tamoy River paper. And Midori. Irofu. And Rodia. These were all of my writing samples, initial thoughts concerning my currently inked fountain pens for the month of September, 2023. Let me know if you have any questions. I am so excited to use these pens this month. The pen show was great. Now it's time to really enjoy everything that I brought home with me. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.